This video will introduce getting started with Studio 5000 and downloading a program to a Compact Logix controller. Now to start with, I have a Compact Logix controller that is already powered with a USB cable connected, so we'll focus on USB connection for this video. When I open Studio 5000, I'm allowed to create a new project, I can open an existing project, or I can import a project or upload it from the controller. For this tutorial, I'm going to start a new project and I have to select the controller that I'm going to use and then give it a few more options. So I'm going to select the L16ER, which is the PLC that I have, and I'm going to give it a name. We'll call it New Test Project. We have to choose a firmware revision. Uh, the firmware of the controller and the software must both match. This controller, this software is limited in which firmware versions I can use. Uh, if I need to change the firmware of either the program or the controller, there are methods to be able to do that, but we'll not cover those right now. For expansion I.O., which this controller uses point I.O. modules to be able to expand, I won't have any in this project, so I'll select zero. I'm not going to select any extra security authority, but we can do that if we want to. Then we'll click finish. Once Studio 5000 starts, what we're going to look at is how to design the tags to reference the correct addresses. I also have a button connected to the first input terminal, or they call it address zero for this PLC, and I have a relay connected to the first output address, which again is output address zero in this PLC. So we're going to start by configuring a couple of tags to be able to call it button and relay just for simplicity's sake, even though we could use the original tags. So here I will open the controller tags and I see that for this project, I do have already a set of inputs and outputs. This has embedded discrete IO in this PLC, but if we were using a compact logics or a control logics that required other additional modules, we'd have to add the modules and then they would show up here in the controller tags. So I'm going to take a look at local 1i, which is the input addresses, and local 1i data shows me that I have 16 available inputs. Same with the outputs. I have zero through 15 or 16 available. For simplicity for programming so that it's easier to read, I'm going to add a couple of new data, a couple of new tags, but really quickly before I do that, I see that I have name, data type, what I do not have up here is another column that's called alias four. So I'm gonna make sure that I check alias four and I'm going to create a button. And the alias four, I can either navigate down or I can remember the address, but this will be the first data input terminal, zero. And I'll do the same thing with a relay, which will be local one O data zero. Now, if I go into monitor tags, I can see that button and relay are both going to be zero. I'm not connected to the controller right now, but if I was, then I could, I could push that button and see if the zero changes into a one. So first I'm gonna go into the main program. Let's build that program really quick and then we'll do the connection. When I'm in my main routine, I can pull in an examine on, which is an XIC examine if closed command. And I can do the same with an output energize. I'm going to select button, which if I just start typing button, you'll see it start auto filling here. And when I hit enter, I see the, ad, the tag that I've created and I see the base address for it. That's really useful for troubleshooting because I know where button is physically connected on the controller. And now relay. And you notice that that red goes away. So it no longer has a problem with this line, which it did just a second ago. Now I need to download this program. Simple, but we have to make sure that we get the program from the computer screen down to the controller. So I'm gonna go up to here, which is RS who, a communication path. And after a couple of seconds, it will give me the available options and USB will be one of those available options. Since it's connected, if I look here, USB, sure enough, there it is. There's my project. Now from here I can download or I can set project path I'm gonna go ahead and just set project path for the moment. And from communications, we can download. Either one of these will get you to the same place. 
Now when I choose to download, which means that I'm sending the program from the computer to the PLC, not vice versa, that's uploading, it's gonna give me a warning that says, are you sure you really wanna do this? Things are gonna happen. If it's connected to some system, you may mess up the system. There may cause motion. Yes, of course that might happen when you're downloading a new program, but I'm gonna confirm download anyway. And after a few seconds, the download will be completed. And the only other thing that I will have to check and make sure is that right up here in the corner when it says REM program, it should change back to remote run when it's finished. Yes. It turns green, it's online, and now when I press the button, I can see that the relay turns on. I can also see it in the program updating the live status of these. Really quick, let's go back to controller tags and watch in our monitor tags as well. When I press the button, I see that it updates to a one and my relay also updates to a one. As a very simple program, but this just goes to show you how easy it is to set up a program and get it downloaded to a compact logics controller. And then later we'll discuss things like ethernet connections and more advanced communications.